Hi friends, Suzanne here. Welcome to another Paper Pumpkin alternative video on my YouTube channel and blog. If you're new to my channel, I wanna say hi. This video will share five alternative projects to stretch your paper pumpkin supplies. If you don't know what paper pumpkin is, click the link in the description box below and check it out. I always show what's in the box before I ignore all the instructions and create my own masterpieces. So come along with me as I attempt to create out of the box. Welcome to another Paper Pumpkin alternative video. This kit is for the month of August 2022 and the name of this kit is Sweet Sunflowers. It was very well received. And the purpose of this kit was to make some cards, but I have several ideas that could stretch your kit into making more from the contents. So here is the beautiful stamp set. We got Crush Curry and uh, Soft Suede. And there was a little extra free gift in here. And these were the honeycomb foils. And then they were advertising for a lovely kit for the holiday season coming up. So uh, there is a link in the description box below and I would love for you to sign up for Paper Pumpkin, at least for the holiday season. So here is the kit. It has all the directions. There was nine cards, I believe. They have color instructions, very simple. And then on the back, they also give some alternatives that the concept designers uh, created and then all the components here and nine cards nine envelopes and all of these components I shall be turning into some alternative projects so hang on with me and we're going to go through five alternatives and I'm going to start right now with the and this isn't in a, a card at all it is a little box so I am trimming down uh, the middle score line pretty much um, and I'm like you know how you do when you put a little piece of paper in your trimmer and you have to like make the image center so you're going to cut off a little bit of this side and a little bit of that side so basically I just wanted this particular piece the one with the flowers and stuff on top I needed it to be size three and a quarter on uh, square. So I'm, I, somebody had asked me one time, Sue, will you please just show us how you cut stuff? And so I'm doing that. And I know it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, but I just needed this piece to be three and a quarter inches square. So I go left and right. And, uh, and then here I am scoring on all four sides at three and a quarter. I am taking my bone folder in this little trough of our trimmer just to, because this is thick cardstock, so I really wanted that score line to appear. And once I have, and I'm measuring on the right side of the trimmer, so if you're wondering what I'm doing, <laughs> it's easier. There's like, uh, I don't know why, but I like it that way. All right, so this is the second half of that card base and I am going to cut it down to four and a quarter. So it's a four and a quarter square size. Getting that cutting blade out of the way, using the score tool on the uh, trimmer and then I'm just burnishing that more or less or rescoring it with my bone folder. And I am scoring at one and a quarter at all four sides. You guys, this isn't, this is my favorite box build. It's not hard at all. I believe you can do it. You could use, if you don't have a trimmer, you could use a grid mat um, or grid paper and then just put your card down and with a ruler, just use your bone folder or the back of a knife and score it that way. All right, so I am just burnishing all those folds down with my bone folder. I'll be honest though, I wish that we had a non-animal uh, product for our bone folder. <laughs> I 
a mock bone folder, if you will. But at the same time, you know, it's uh, using all parts of the animal. So there's that. We can feel better about that. No, nothing has gone to waste. All right. So what I am doing is I am trimming out all the little score lines. So go up on the score line and I like to wedge out because I find that uh, it uh, there's no overhang and it looks neater. So this is what we're doing. We're cutting up on the score line and then we're just wedging out on both sides. So that just makes a cleaner looking box. And you, I call this the pinwheel technique where I keep on turning and I cut up on that left hand side of the of the box so I cut up the score line I wedge it out a little bit and then I wedge out on the outside and then turn and then and I guess I kind of it looks sort of like a pinwheel doesn't it um yeah so that's what I'm doing uh cutting out all those little wedges so now I have my favorite adhesive which is seal plus and sometimes I always have to give seal plus a little start so that's what I'm doing when I touch my thumb but I like to score or I like to place the adhesive at the scored side of that little tab and then at the bottom of the little tab so scored side and I call that the free edge all right, so, and I'm gonna do, it's harder to do it on your lid here, so I'm just gonna put one little strip instead of two strips of adhesive. So just down the side there, and I mean, this adhesive rubs away really easily, so not a problem. All right, starting with the base of the box, I'm gonna take that scored side up to the free edge. So, or the free edge of the side, if that makes sense. Just, you know, it will all go together if you scored everything correctly. And if you uh, put adhesive on the right side, you guys, this is such an easy build. So, and then if there's any, I always go over and if there's any overhang or if it feels weird or what have you, I will trim it off. So when I'm doing the lid, I'm gonna do the exact same thing for two sides and I had a little adhesive rolled it off <laughs> and then so I have two sides done now I'm going to fit the box in and then I'm going to stick the lid over the box so I know it's going to fit and again I have adhesive on my fingers that's what you see me do roll them off roll it off but there you go you don't want it too snug but you want it snug enough that if you have say a Ferrero Rocher in there or a diamond ring it's not the lid's not going to come flying off so that is uh the alternative uh it's not a card it's a little box so I'm using that uh, soft suede and I stamped on a little piece of the card that was um like extra and there's a sentiment that just says hello so I thought that would be lovely and I have a dimensional mini dimensionals on the back side of that and then I'm going to pop it up on another piece of card and again I got it from the kit so nothing special needed and I popped that up and placed it on it's sort of like just a white piece and then the nice thing that you use if you use the leftovers from the kit the white is the same and let me tell you there is a difference between whites some whites are uh, grayer some are pure white some are uh, like if you put a paper pumpkin uh, card base that is white up against our basic white it's not the same white so that's why I wanted to use these extra scraps because they match, the whites match. So I, I put uh, it on a third piece of card. And uh, this one actually has a little bit of leftover, yeah, uh, I think it's foliage. So I stacked it up three times just for fun. I haven't done this in a while, so that was fun to do. Uh, trimming that off. And again, oftentimes, I, like, I'm not going to give you the measurements here because I'm eyeballing it. I have no idea. I, well, I, I can measure it now, 
but I mean really it came out to be a one and a half inch the last one one and a half by I don't know seven eighths of an inch sort of thing anyway what I'm saying is you can eyeball a lot of things so I put um, just regular adhesive my stamp and seal on the back side and then I plunked this in the bottom left corner and it left room I love the fact that this I mean it was such a pretty kit that it was hard not to it was hard to cut it up I guess <laughs> it was a very pretty kit Okay, here we go with card number two, or actually project number two, because the first one wasn't a card, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm using an envelope, a basic white card base, and the free gift that we were given in this Sweet Sunflowers August 2022 kit. So I am cutting out the inside or the honeycomb part of the frame. So what I'm going to use is glue to adhere down the frame. So I want, I don't want any cuts in the frame. I'm trying to keep the frame pristine. I am removing the honeycomb and sometimes it's hard because there's a little, the honeycomb kind of catches on your scissors. So just go slow and uh, trim the inside out. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> uh, and yeah so that's what I'm doing these are my paper snips I don't know if you've ever used these paper snips before but they are delightful they are super sharp they have a, they're almost I would almost say well no they're pretty close to hair scissors or shears as I would call them at work they are very sharp though and I love the the point it is pointy uh, and now I'm just going to clean up the inside of the frame. So I do want that frame really like a frame. I don't want any like little bits in and out. So I cleaned that right up and then set it aside because out comes Excalibur, my letter opener, <laughs> and I'm going to rip apart that envelope. So the back side I'm not going to use. There's nothing exciting going on that back side but the front side I'm definitely going to use. So what I ended up doing was using my favorite adhesive, which is Seal Plus, and I put it all over the front part of my basic white card base. So I got really close to the edges, made sure that I got everything, one in the middle so there's no flapping around, and uh, on either edge top and bottom so now I'm going to take my card my envelope I should say and I'm going to plunk it down where I want it I did want to get the bottom and a little bit on the top and then I just smoothed it on my card base and with my bone folder I ended up creasing the card then I come in with these nice big long scissors. I've had a lot of questions about them. Stampin' Up! used to carry them. Uh, these are Stampin' Up! brand. I still use them because they're phenomenal. I have only seen one other place that carries them, but they're not the same. They're a lesser quality. And the it was Epicure, actually, uh, a, a, like a spice company that started out in Victoria, British Columbia, I believe. And now it is um, opened to the U.S. So if you want one of these long scissors, find an Epicure um, consultant and ask her for a pair of shears or scissors. For the kitchen they're supposed to be but they're nice and long and like i said and they're actually quite affordable they're only about 30 bucks so all right so this is just normal uh like tombow mono adhesive and i put it on the back side of my gold foil frame and i'm putting that right on my card base now if i was more careful um, i'm slightly off 
So I am, what I'm going to do is eventually I'll just cut off just like, I don't know, one sixteenth of an inch on the right hand side and I'll be more even. So again, I used the scrap of the card uh, base that was from the previous project and I am going to fussy cut the thank you. So again, I had somebody say, how do you fussy cut? So I am nothing but a giver. So I will share with you how I fussy cut. And I'm sorry if some of you are bored. You can see the angle of my shear, it does, or scissor, it doesn't uh, move very much on this side. So as I, I'm using the paper to turn and my finger, you can see, and I wiggle back and forth, and then I turn the corner. And once you sort of turn that corner, I end up using my scissors a lot more. Do you see that? I wiggle them back and forth and back and forth, and I'm incising each time I do that. And then um, once I get to a point where I can't cut anymore, and it's a smooth cut, there's no chop, 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 it's one fell swoop. Then when I get to a spot where I can't cut anymore, I move the paper up to where the pivot is close to, you know, the, the, I don't know, the screw thing. And I start cutting again. So it's a long fell swoop of cut. And I hope that helps anybody fussy cutting. I know people have said, well, uh, you don't move your scissor or your hand, uh, but you do. <laughs> you move both and the paper too. All right, so enough lessons. So <laughs> I uh, used a long strip of dimensional adhesive. I just cut it off of uh, my dimensionals off the back side or like off the side and then um, removing that release paper. And now I'm going to stick it on my honeycombs and then and I'll uh, indirectly stick it to the card. The nice thing about honeycombs is that they have holes in it, so I didn't have to put any extra adhesive. I just used my thank you to stick it to the card. All right, here we go with card number three. This is a twofer. So this was one of the card bases in the kit and I cut that down to uh, three and a quarter by five inches of a mat. So I also have two basic white card bases off to the side as well. And I'm going to cut apart again this one particular card that had uh, the, the uh, flower on the both front and back. All right, and again, I'm going to adjust my cutting so that I have uh, a piece of card that has all the picture in it that I want. So I'm gonna cut off some of the boring parts and that sort of thing. I need a size that is three and five eighths tall and four and seven eighths long on the first one and three and five eighths wide on this one and four and seven eighths tall. So it's the same measurement. One is um, horizontal and one is vertical. And these are going to get matted to that green cardstock. But again, I'm a giver, so I'm just showing you how I cut stuff uh, I, I have been asked before. So many times actually, and oftentimes I cut this out of the video because I think that you don't wanna see it, but uh, apparently I am wrong. What do I know? Uh, so I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink for this card because I'm stamping right on the card base. And like I said before, it was, um, I don't know, it's thicker or I don't, it just me, I don't know. I just didn't want to use brown. How's that? <laughs> I like my black sentiments. 
All right, so I'm adhering these to their mats and I shall put them on my card base. And then you have a twofer, which means two cards for one design. And I suppose if you wanted to, and I just thought of this now, it would have actually looked really good with a gold foil behind that as well. So if you wanted to add a touch of gold, um, I'm just, I just like the simplicity. I like those little purple flowers. So uh, using my bone folder to crease, Okay, we have the second to last card. Uh, this is card number four. And this is a, I wanna say four fur. <laughs> it is a quattro fur. So I have four pieces of uh, basic white, just regular weight stamping paper. And I, I, I mean, it would have been good if I just had a full, full sheet but I always cut them up into quarters because I never use them for card bases. So I, um, I just sort of push them together, hoping uh, that they would stick together. And for the most part, they did. So I'm inking up with Crush Curry. I'm also going in with a finger dauber and daubing the inside of my sunflower. And yeah, so I'm going to do that around the middle, around the, the cross, like where the paper is cut. I'm kind of wanting to stick to that. Um, like I, I just feel like it's better if it's sort of clustered over the crease and you'll see what, um, how it turns out in a, in a minute. I'm going to obviously make four cards because these are my card fronts. So it's like I'm making my own pattern paper. Um, yeah, so I'm stamp, I'm inking up my stamp. I am uh, daubing on the center with uh, pumpkin pie. I suppose you could use any color that you wanted that wasn't clashing. The problem, <laughs> the problem I was having here is like I'd knocked the paper and then it went all jumbled and then I'd have to puzzle piece it back together. <laughs> so probably spent more time puzzle piecing than I did stamping. So if you have a full sheet of card, I would, I would recommend that and then just cut it down because you can see I struggle here and then I struggled to put it together and then I don't even use the, the crease. Anyway, <laughs> so that's done. So now I'm using Crush Curry with Soft Suede for my sunflower center. And I love being able to uh, use a two-tone. So that's why I like the um, Dauber as an ink delivery system. I know some people use the old rock and roll method and I think that's too harsh and I don't, I don't like the result ever from that. With a, a little bit of a finger dauber, you're getting a softer look around the edges or wherever you're um, applying that ink. So that's the reason why I don't want, I don't, and you've never seen me use the rock and roll method because I think it's antiquated. Sorry, that noise was the cats. They were getting into something. All right, and then I'm using old olive for the leaves. And I ended up sort of going, oh, well, maybe I can use the, I guess this is like quatra, quatra stamping. Um, and I thought I could do it with the leaves, but I eventually gave up and I'm using just the greenery on each single uh, pane of the quatra, um, quatra panes. There, I just, and I just, I just invented a new, a new name. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's two different, um, leaves here. There's kind of like a, I don't know, a frondy thing and a actual open green leaf. So, and now I've just moved into the frond and I'm trying to fill it out. 
So again, you never know how this kind of uh, technique is going to turn out. Um, and they turn out lovely. I quite enjoy uh, doing stuff like this. This is, I mean, seriously, you can make four cards very, very quickly. Um, and then I'm coming in with... I came in with these markers. So I used a Crush Curry marker and this is called spritzing. So I put the nib inside the lid and I press quite hard and I flick it and I'm flicking color all over the page. So this brings me back to my mixed media days. Um, I have a whole bunch of mixed media um, videos out there if you ever or care to uh, watch. Uh, so that was soft suede I also went in and now I'm stamping directly on the card front. Uh, I only had one that I wanted to take the sentiment up and out of the and give it more of um, a center stage if you will. So I'm just using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Again, I love my black sentiments. And this is the card that I use, just a little strip of basic white. And I'm going to trim it down, put dimensional adhesive on the back of it. And I'm going to adhere it to the card over top of the, like a white space kind of in the, in my flowers. And then, so those were mini dimensionals, by the way, and I plunk that, thank you, right in the middle there, sort of in between my leaves. There was a white space there, so looks great. All right, so now I'm put, I am put my favorite adhesive, which is Stampin' Seal Plus, uh, just on the corners and uh, one daub in the middle. This adhesive is quite strong. Once you get the hang of how to use it, um, it is very strong. It's much stronger than uh, Seal Plus. All right, and then I'm just going to adhere them to my card bases. So I'm almost doing this uh, like mass production style, uh, doing everything all at once. So adhering things to the card base, it saves energy and your mind focuses on what you're doing and not necessarily on how many you have to get done. So probably my favorite one was the one with the um, extra soft suede splatter up there <laughs> and uh, the thank you. But I mean, they're all different, right? And they all have that hazy August end of summer, you can't wait for fall kind of feel. And the one last thing that I did was I took some of the bees that were in this kit and I thought I would adhere them like um, like embellishments. So I initially tried it out. I shouldn't have done three on this one. Uh, it feels to me like there's a swarm of bees and I'm not really fond of insects on my cards. So to me, it felt like a swarm, <laughs> a swarm of bees. So I end up taking off those bottom two. Um, but yeah, I just dotted one and then I couldn't remember where I wanted this one. So I'm like, where do I put? Yeah, no, it's just there. So I try one on the rest of them and I'm happy with just the one B. One friendly non-swarming B is good on these cards. And then I take over the two, like, I guess they're the two killer bees there because I removed them because it was just too many bees, just too many insects on my card. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't you do that? You make something and then you rip it off your card. <laughs> I do it all the time. Uh, usually off camera, but I thought I would just bring you all in and be real with you. All right, here we are with the last and final card for the Sweet Sunflowers August 22 Paper Pumpkin Kit. This was a simple one. 
I cut the card apart. This is one of my go-to methods. I cut, I have a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half piece of card and I cut it down to, I just cut it in half. I cut it down to two and three quarters wide and four and a quarter tall. And here is that free gift again. I just gently held the card above where I wanted to cut and made sure that I had enough of that gold and roughly cut. You can see I'm just going in there and cutting to town. So again, I invite you guys to comment and uh, what cards you like or card design that you like. One through five, it's always, um, it's always nice to get interaction from uh, the audience. And uh, it also helps with the algorithm at uh, YouTube. I am trying to grow my channel, so I would love it if you subscribed. If you hadn't, I would love that. So I put dimensional adhesive on the back, stamped with my favorite black ink. And those are my cards for today, kids. I did want to remind you that I have two online classes to offer. I have um, Grateful Tiles at a very, very low price. And I also have the Quiet Meadow um, where I'm offering a little bit of a discount. And I have a new initiative right now. I'm calling it Be Kit Creative. So you buy a kit and you receive a bonus of a written PDF plus consumables to make four more cards stretching your Stampin' Up! pre-cut kit. So it's not a paper pumpkin kit, it's a just a regular kit. So that's it for me. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.